How's it going, everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is the ninth and final part of What If Deku Had Bond's Powers. And now, before you begin, I would just like to ask you all to please put your what-if suggestions down in the comments section below. And now, let's begin. We start this final part off with Isuku adopting Eri and the marriage of Mina and Kirishima. Both of them, after years of dating, would finally decide to marry. And we also find out that Isuku would end up finding a girlfriend of his own. This would be Ochako Uraraka. She had watched Isuku who half his girlfriend teared apart from him, and ever since basically he was in UA, she had had a crush on him. And with the death of Toga, which she was very sad for, as Toga was one of her best friends, but also kind of happy for, as Izuku was now on the quote-unquote open market for dating. However, it would take her a while to finally end up asking Izuku out, where she would end up asking him out at their UA graduation, which of course Izuku would, and Meliodas would end up being invited to. So as everyone would be leaving, Uraraka would end up asking Izuku out, which Izuku just decided to shrug and say, eh, what the hell, I'll give it a try, as he hadn't dated anyone since the death of Toga over two years before this. And so Izuku decided to get back into the game, and finally was ready to date again, wanting to have a family. As much as Izuku didn't let it on, the death of Toga really hurt him, as Izuku didn't have much feelings for Toga, they were only together for around 7 or 8 months. However, for those months, they had basically lived together in a hut to going to UA. They had risen from the bottom to basically the top, and Izuku had sort of an emotional attachment and bond to her. However, at the death of her, and over the years, Izuku and that just attachment slowly faded away, which allowed for Uraraka to come into his life, which they would end up being very happy together, even with them adopting Eri together, and after three years of dating, they would end up marrying, as Izuku would end up just calling Chaco. Uraraka, and would even end up taking Uraraka's last name for a little bit before he would finally end up deciding to bring back his own mother's name, Midoriya. It had him a while for him basically just to stop just feeling bad about his mother's death, however it had took him even longer to end up bringing his last name back, as for a little while when he was on the streets he had basically felt like he wasn't doing the family name any good. However, with him now in the top 50 heroes at the point he married Uraraka, and Uraraka also being in the top 50 heroes, he had finally felt like the last name should end up coming back. As much as confidence Izuku just, just as much as Izuku was confident, Izuku also didn't want to let his own family down, and so Uraraka would end up becoming Midoriya for both of them, along with Eri or Eri. It's kind of mixed up how I pronounce it, just because it looks like Eri, but it's actually Eri. It's strange, but I'll hopefully try to remember Eri, as some of you guys have corrected me in the comments. So, with that, we end up cutting into a warehouse with a vengeful villain just training for hours upon hours every single day, with one thought in mind, Airy. And with that one word, I know most of you will end up remembering who this villain is. It's Overhaul, and this villain was ready to take back his prize, the thing that had caused him to be able to create those five cork-canceling bullets. Of those five, he still has all five of them remaining in his collection, and so he was ready to use them on Izuku to make sure he would be able to secure Izuku's now daughter, Eri. And so, is 
Uku being highly publicized after these three years, now being in the top 50 to the top 25, taking down some pretty notice notable villains. However, he wasn't the number one hero right away. Izuku didn't want to just go crazy with it. He wanted fame, he wanted the money to just help his family or his going family and himself, which was much like what Uraraka wanted, and so they would end up mainly just focusing on doing as much jobs as possible, which would bring them a lot of fame in the just lesser areas, which weren't like crowded with mega popular villains or mega villains that would rank him up five ranks if he were to defeat one. So with that, they would get money from those as they were able to do tons of those missions. And so once they had money, they would finally decide to focus on the bigger villains, which would help just the more general population, which had been Izuku and Izuku's sidekick, well, now partner Meliodas, and just Kirishima, which they had been doing for quite a while, as Izuku's agency had ended up just turning into the Sin Agency, which tied back to just Izuku's in being the fox sin of greed and Meliodas being the dragon sin of wrath. So with Izuku's ever-growing family and with him finally being financially stable, he would end up going out into the real world and fighting as just all these super crazy powerful villains that he could. Just wanting to fight as many as he could, wanting to save as many people as he could. So, with Izuku's heart and mind in the right place, with saving as many people as possible, this would cause him to gain more and more fame until he was basically in the spotlight, as he was now one of the top 10 heroes, along with Bakugo, Todoroki, Kirishima, and Meliodas. With Izuku now in the top 10, this caused his life to become highly publicized, which allowed for Overhaul to end up finding exactly where he was, as the vengeful Overhaul would end up planning out his deed just in exact detail, what street Izuku who lived on what exact house, Izuku's house layout, with the media making Izuku do a house tour just as sort of an added bonus, which Izuku, regretful as he could, he wasn't the number one hero, he couldn't just say no, I'm not gonna allow that, and tons of people would be like, okay, Izuku's the ninth top pro hero. Sure, he's just the ninth top pro hero in the country, however, that doesn't mean Izuku's still not going to drop if he weren't to do something from the public. As Izuku had rose so fast, they were still kind of skeptic on Izuku's just how good he was with the people, the public, how good he was at defeating villains. Which, looking back, is just quite, quite stupid how the public could view Izuku's hold crazily when he had stopped Shigaraki just all those years back. So with Overhaul, he would end up sneaking into Izuku's house late one night, creeping down the halls as Izuku's floorboards would echo throughout the halls. As Overhaul would end up pulling out the special weapon he had prepared with the quirky canceling serum inside. As he would end up opening up Izuku's doors, Izuku, uh, Izuku's eye would end up opening, hearing the noise as Izuku had always remained vigilant when sleeping. This was because people would end up coming to his tent when he was young to hopefully just steal some of the stuff Izuku had stolen prior. So Izuku would learn to basically always sleep with one eye open. So as Izuku saw this, Izuku would end up seeing Overhaul walk into his room. As Izuku would end up seeing this, he would end up jumping out of his bed, throwing the covers into the air. As Overhaul would end up firing the serum, it would hit right 
into just the bed covers that Azuka would thrown into the air as Azuka would end up rushing towards Overhaul, tackling him to the ground, not before Overhaul had shot off another bullet. As time would start to slow down for Azuku, Azuku would look over towards where the bullet was going, right on towards his sleeping wife, Uraka, or Uchako Midoriya. As Azuku would be seeing this, he would yell for just Ochako to wake up, however, she would remain motionless, still fast asleep. With Izuku seeing this, he would let go of Overhaul, planting his feet before jumping over towards the bullet, not being able to catch it in time, rather putting his hand out in front of it. As it would end up sticking right into Izuku, Izuku would pull it out, not before some of the serum would go right into him. However, it really did nothing at all. Overhaul would look on confused at why this was. Why did he just why did his power stay the same? As the serum with the amount Izuku had gotten basically had done nothing at all. Izuku had gotten stuck with it but and then pulled it out before the latch causing all the serum to be sprayed into Izuku's body had even flipped. So nothing would end up going into Izuku causing for him just to be insanely lucky. With overall seeing this, he would raise up the weapon once again, however, this time the prepared Izuku would catch all the last three bullets before throwing them right back in overhaul, catching him in the top of the chest, once in the leg, and once in the left arm. As Overhaul would fall down to the ground holding his arms in pain, he would feel the essence of his cork draining away from him. As would end up just being locked away, as he would end up having to use Eerie to unlock it once again. And so, with Eerie basically just being adopted in, in the family of the Midorias, he knew he had no chance of getting his court back, ever. As Asuk would end up seeing the eating it just overhaul there, Izuku would knock him out before calling the police, where Izuku would then promptly put his house up on the market the next day. As we now cut forward ten years into the future, the immortal Izuku looks the same as ever, as he is the number one hero. As with Izuku being the number one hero, his family would have grown to two more kids, one boy, a girl, along with Eri. So, with Izuku's family growing, Izuku would hide his house from the public, making sure that no one would peer pressure him into telling anyone ever again. And so, Izuku's story would become complete. He had just a family that he had always wanted and made sure to protect them to the fullest. And Izuku would end up sickly having this family until the very end, which Izuku, sensing the end was end up nearing with his wife Ur Raku or Chako on her deathbed, Izuku would end up searching for ways he could give her some of his immortality, which he just happened to find a way to do so, allowing her his family to be preserved. However, Izuku, just having the dream of her deathbed, would start this very, very early on, when they were just about in their 20s, right after their marriage. And so Izuku would get this to her very early on, so basically they would never age. And so with this just power that Izuku had gained to give some of his powers away to others, Izuku knew he would try to keep his family just as much as he possibly could. As the one thing is who loved more than smashing a villain's face in was family. All this the offense, sleeping on dirt, just being Toka's boyfriend, had all leapt up to him being the number one hero, saving millions upon millions of people. As Izuku would end up smiling to himself, looking up at the stars after being crowned the number one hero, as Izuku knew he had finally done it, he was finally successful, and was finally at the one place he wanted to be in life, at the top. 
And that is where What If Deku Had Bond's Powers comes to an end. I hope you all did enjoy the series as it was really fun to make, and if you did, please consider subscribing as you can even be notified when my other series do end up coming out. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.